Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to bring to this virtual stage from the cast of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the movie. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Miss Judith Hogue. Hello. And Mr. Ernie Reyes Jr. Hello. hello. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Y'all hello, have hello. No idea. Yes, yes. Y'all, you have no idea how excited I am to do this panel. I am a lifelong Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fan. That is just, I mean, it's my life. You guys are so responsible for all the things. Um, Judith, you're probably my first celebrity crush. I have no problems acknowledging that. Ernie, you're the reason why I proudly claim to be a junior. Like that's, you know, <laughs> the junior love was, was tip top and it's all because of you guys. How are you guys doing? How's that's 2020 awesome. been treating you guys? Oh, it's a breeze. It's so much fun. <laughs> it's, it's really, this has been a no brainer. I don't know, Ernie? uh yeah you know what it's been a, it, it's a fight you know right uh, so yeah. uh but you know it's uh you know we we uh both judith and i we we have a chance to to chat you know frequently and and uh you know we keep a, a positive attitude and a and a positive outlook uh regardless of what's happening in the environment because you know that's stuff that we can't really control so of course uh you know we're doing our best just like everyone that's the, yeah. that's the way. Yeah, the right I think way. keeping it positive is really the most important thing that you can do right now. Um, because it, I don't remember who said the quote, but, you know, life works out the best for those who make the best of the way that life works out. And so I think that this is, if you can shift your brain set, then mm -hmm. you could look at potentially this as an opportunity to, um, to, figure out the things in your life that are working, that aren't working, that you want to hang with, that you don't want to do anymore. And right. so, but it requires a little. Of course. And I think that's, that's literally the sound effect for 2020 is the, like that's, <laughs> it describes it all. Um, now you, you both have had an illustrious career already, let alone whatever you might have in the future, which we will talk about. But the thing that's bringing us together today is the Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtle franchise. Now I'm a comic book guy. Um, Obviously, the, the series started off 1984, you know, backpack sales and things like that. Were you guys aware of the Turtle Comics phenomenon before you got hired for this movie? I, I did not. No. I did not. I didn't find out about it until it was really Robin Williams who clued me in wow. on Ninja Turtles because he had the very first comic book. He was a collector. He loved the series. He gave me my street cred about it. I was doing a film with him at the time. Was that and, Cadillac Man? Yeah. And I know, God, he's, I can't even sort of say how influential he was. I think in my life and my career and how I do stuff, I mean, he was just such a master to watch working, but he used to say to me, where are you going? Because we'd work Monday through Friday. We were shooting at a Cadillac dealership in Queens and, you know, as soon as I could get out, I was always plotting with the ADs, like, how soon can you get me out? Because I would have to hop on a plane and zip to North Carolina where we started pre-production. And he just looked at me and went, we all want to be in this movie. You, I mean, he was super joking, but it was like, where are you going? And I said, oh, I'm, I'm shooting another movie. And um, I was a little bashful about saying the name. And he said, I said, I'm doing this movie. It's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and, you know, whatever. And, and then he said, wait, what, 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 what? It's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And he went off. And wow. it was like, you know what I'm talking about? Cause I've never heard of this before. And he's like, I've got the comic book and the whole thing. And, and then he was a champion and then he came to the premiere and he brought his family and it was just. That is awesome. awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's super awesome. Yeah. Ernie, what I had about a younger you? brother. Yeah, I had a okay. younger brother uh, who uh, was into the toys. So I was familiar with it this, I guess Christmas, it was the Christmas before we shot the first movie that I first really kind of got on the, uh, they became, got on my radar. And so I was, I was familiar with them and I knew that my younger brother was a huge fan. Um, but, uh, I didn't know, you know, what it, what it was eventually going to become. Of course. Uh, yeah. So, but yeah, I told my younger brother, Hey, I'm going to get to, and he was like, Oh man, he lost his cookies. So <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Cool. 
That is amazing. Now, most people, obviously for you, Ernie, most people know that your association with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was in, you know, two Secret of the Ooze, but right. us real fans, uh, us tried and true folks know that you were actually a part of the stunt crew on the first movie. In fact, you played Donatello. So Correct. what, like, what was that transition like considering that you're working with or in the shoes of multiple people? Uh, there's multiple, like, wh- who's it? Leaf was the Leaf physical Feldman. actor. Yeah. And then Corey Feldman was the voice actor. And then you right. stepped in to do some stuff. And we also had a puppeteer. And I don't yes. remember, I think Dave Foreman might have been his puppeteer. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. I don't remember exactly who did who, but a lot mm-hmm. of the Sesame, the guys from Creature Shop were also the voices of, we had Elmo. That's amazing. Big Bird and Count. We, so we had all those actors doing the voices. That's so amazing. it took it took four people to make one turtle. One turtle. Yeah. The project of a lifetime. That's yeah. awesome. Amazing. Yeah, it was That's amazing. I met you know. Ernie though. He was, you were what, 17? Yeah, 17. <laughs> Man, and it was horrible. amazing. <laughs> so Pat Johnson uh, was the stunt coordinator. Mm-hmm. And just to kind of give some of the fans who probably don't know the background of it, you know, uh, so Golden Harvest was the uh, production company from Hong Kong mm-hmm. who had done all the famous martial arts movies from Bruce Lee to Jet Li to Jackie Chan and all of that kind of stuff. So you know, when I heard Golden Harvest, of course, I was familiar with Golden Harvest. Bruce Lee was my hero. So uh, I was like, oh, my God, it's the same company that did all the Bruce Lee movies, you know. Uh, and Pat Johnson was the stunt coordinator who I'd known from my competing days as a martial artist as a kid. Mm-hmm. And uh, so there were four guys originally. They were all from Hong Kong. They were all mm-hmm. Golden Harvest stunt guys that were coming over. And during pre-production one of the guys hurt his back really bad. Oh, no. And so they needed a last minute replacement as they were going. They had already had three guys from Hong Kong. And so Pat called me up and was like, hey, I'm doing this thing or whatever. And it was just I was like, yes, you know. And uh, so it was cool because we went over there and I was part of that stunt team, which was basically the first time Hong Kong stuntmen were coming to America doing uh, an American production. Right. Uh, and these guys didn't even speak any English. That's so, breaking ground, uh, man. That's incredible. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was it was pretty awesome just to be part of the whole thing. And uh, it was I mean, those are just it's like the golden memories, you know, of life. So I love. Yeah, that. it was amazing. And, oh, and Judith. God. And, and uh, I remember seeing her for the first time on, uh, you know, set. We were at a basketball court, I think it was. And we were kind of going over fight stuff and. Uh, it was just, it was just such a magical moment in time. Yeah. That's amazing. I love that. We actually have some people tuning in from all over the world already. I got to give a shout out. We've got folks from the UK, Chicago, California, Minnesota, Louisiana, Canada, Kentucky, Maryland, Oregon, Ohio, where I am and Oklahoma. So all over the place, folks are tuning in, which nice. is fantastic. Uh, John Courtney says, uh, TMNT 1990, because you got to be specific, uh, was the first movie <laughs> I'd seen in the theater as a child and still one of my all-time favorites today. I, that's got to be something you know monumental for your career when there are people 30 years later that are like, you made you know an impact on me. How does that, how does that resonate with you guys? It's like a, a blessing and a gift and... and I, of monumental proportion. You know, when you choose to become an actor, mm-hmm. you throw yourself out there. It's sort of like taking spaghetti and throwing it against the wall and hoping that it sticks. And if you're lucky enough to get some traction and you actually can make a career out of it, like that in and of itself is a is wonderful. But when you do something that touches a cultural nerve, mm-hmm. when you do something that has some staying power, which we had... Ernie, I don't know if you had any idea that it was going to be like this. I had zero idea. I didn't even, I didn't know what I was getting into, but that it would be something that would resonate with people um, is just, uh, it's such a wonderful thing. And I have to say that the Ninja Turtle community is amazing. It is such a positive community. Mm -hmm. It's such creative people. It's, um, 
It's been a blessing for me. You know, when I started doing Comic Cons, I kind of walked away from the franchise afterwards because I didn't really know what it was. I mean, it was a huge thing, obviously, at the time, but but then it over the years it just kept following me and following me. And when I started doing Comic Cons about five years ago and I got to meet the fans, mm-hmm. that was it. Cause I got to start hearing the stories and people started sharing with me what it meant to them. And I didn't know that. I didn't know how much, I mean, people come up to you and, you know, and I'm, I, I try to keep my head on straight. So I don't, you know, really, it's like, Oh, thank you. Thank you. But I'm not like, Oh, whatever. (laughs) I, I don't do that. So it took a lot of thunking on the head from fans really telling me what it meant to them. And And that was when I went, wait a second, there's something here that I really need to honor and connect with. Of course. Because it's a reciprocal relationship to me. Of course, of course. And it's gotta be harder for you because you have so many different features, especially in this era. Is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles like the one that people come to you the most about? I mean, it's definitely by far the biggest project that I was involved with, you know, at that time, probably just up until now, uh, even. And so, you know, what's kind of cool about it is, is that, you know, you have this generation of people that grew up on the Ninja Turtle fans. Mm -hmm. And now here we are some 30 years later, and it's generational because mm-hmm. now those those people are parents and they've got kids that are somewhere between four, five, six, and 10 years old. And it's cool because when we get to, to in, interact with these fans, you can see the kids are kind of like, who are, you know, <laughs> I don't get it. And the parents are like, oh my God, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guilty. That is me. Yeah. It's, definitely so, me. it's cool to be part of something that has that kind of energy and that kind of staying power to be able to affect people in that way mm-hmm. some 30 years later, decades later, you know, it still holds that a, a certain place and, and, a, and a, a association of positive energy and good mm-hmm. times and nostalgia. And so it's super cool to be, to be part of it and still connect with that and then meet the children of, you know, these super fans that, you know, grew up on this stuff and, you know, how much it's affected their life and, and now how it's affecting their kids' lives, right? Of course, so of course. Um, it's just, it's beyond cool. No, that's awesome. That's super awesome. A yeah. lot of people are shouting out uh, Surf Ninjas about Ernie as well. So you got to yeah. get some love about Surf Ninjas because that's, yeah, that's I yeah, mean, I mean, the whole move. So, yeah. So the after uh, we did the sequel of mm-hmm. uh, The Secret of the Ooze, then Surf Ninja's new line came to me right after that. And we're like trying to, we're trying to basically continue riding that wave, you know? And uh, when the movie came out uh, theatrically, uh, it, you know, it wasn't a big hit at all. Kind of actually, I remember reading the Hollywood report and it was like, you know, Surf Ninja's wipes out. <laughs> you they know, really did like, That's what their problem yeah. Hey, Ernie, you, it, know. <laughs> you know, Ninja Turtles did not get great reviews either. So. Which, yeah is yeah. absolutely insane but, literally yeah the critics were not amused uh no, but the thing was is, Ebert, what you know it used to be Cisco yeah. Ebert back then he was not having it yeah <laughs> but not. you know the thing is is the you know with surf ninjas it was you know it you don't know i mean so many people come up to me and say how much they love those films you mm-hmm. know and mm-hmm. that's really for me what it's all about like connecting with people is just is just having a moment where we can relive that feeling of just being just good times, good vibes, good feelings, you know, and you can see it as we meet people and talk to them. It's like, you talk about the Ninja Turtles and it's nothing but just positive vibes and good times. So of course, of course. And and I think right now, you know, given what we're all living through with 2020, Mm -hmm. that, those nostalgic experiences and those things that take us back to a time where it was just simpler and less complicated Mm -hmm. and that there was good and bad and it was very easy to see and, and uh, that it's something that is right now uh, wonderful to see people sort of visiting that and going, I just had, am I allowed to swear? I just had a a shitty week and I need to like get rid of this week. 
And so they'll order a pizza and they'll crack open a beer or get a glass of water or whatever it is and watch the movie yes. and get transported. And it's like, it undoes. It just gives them a break from the shit show. 100%. I think the Turtles uh, actually started what I call living nostalgia, where there's this place of, of you feeling like a kid when you first experienced it, but we had the resources to continuously watch it, whether it's VHS, now DVDs or Blu-rays are now streaming because uh, one and two, and I think three actually are streaming on HBO Max right now. So everyone oh. can experience this right. literally right now. Uh, right, but I got to cool. give a shout out. Ben Baroni said, I started karate because of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And now I have my own academy for 10 years. And I think that says oh, ben. that says so much about exactly what, what I mean, where the impact that you that you, you know, made on on a generation of people literally has paid out exponentially, not just in terms of people's fandom, but literally what they do in their everyday lives. And that's that's got to be fantastic. Um, Josh Super Duty wants to know, this is a very Aww. sincere question. I love Josh. What's your favorite line or scene? For we'll me... Go, we'll go both movies, one and two. So whichever. Okay, so uh, since I wasn't, I'll just do movie one. Okay. Uh, for me, I think my favorite line is, uh, why don't I ever dream of Harrison Ford? <laughs> Tell me you've met him and that was it. brought up. Was that, have you met him yet? I have not met Harrison Ford. What? Okay, Twitter, um, get on this. Yeah, Twitter, yes. Um, but it was, but on that day that we were shooting that was the day that I met Jim Henson. So oh. I like having Harrison Ford there. And uh, I had to, I sort of made a deal with myself that I, once we were done shooting that scene, which is when I've been brought down to the sewer and I'm meeting them all for the first time, that I would just stay in that scene until we were done because I thought, I don't know what's gonna happen when I meet Jim Henson. I may cry, <laughs> I may, I don't know, I may become tongue-tied. Right. But he was amazing and very sweet and kind. Oh and of course, you immediately felt comfortable around Of him. course, the legend, the legend. Yeah. Ernie, what about you, favorite line or scene? Mm. I mean, for me, you know, I mean, the Ninja Turtles is on so many levels for me meant so many different things, you know, mm -hmm. coming into it, you know, as a stunt guy in the first film, you know, and then being part of something like a huge success like that. And it's mm -hmm. an, like you, we said, it's an ensemble just for one character. Right. right. There's, there's multiple people. You know, and so in the second film, when I was able to come back as one of the lead actors of the film, like that was a huge thing. That was like a huge, it just, that, that doesn't happen normally. True. You don't go from being a stuntman to being one of the leads in the movie. Right. You know, so th that was, uh, that was just amazing for me to, uh, to just experience that kind of progression, right? And awesome. uh, yeah, so when I when we did the opening sequence that's taking place in the, uh, you know the the toy store downstairs and the yes. big fight and whatever, I mean I was you know we went into it the first time nobody knew what it was going to be right then right. it comes out and it's this giant you know a huge blockbuster. Now we're coming back the second you know summer in a row. And it's like, wow, we already know it's a huge, it's like, it, it's good. This is going to be big. You already knew that it was right. going to be big. And so here I am like basically opening the whole movie, you know? So when they ask, like, I'm like, Hey, hold it. You're all under arrest. Like, what are you night security? I'm like, no, actually I'm pizza, pizza delivery. delivery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there was just so many different moments, but you know, that really stuck out for me because I remember being in that moment going, wow, you know, there was a natural progression to things and it was all about just the hard work and the focus and the faith and the belief that, you know, you would continue to make progress. And, and I feel like that still today, you know, you kind of have well, to have a vision of things and just keep working hard and keep your keep focused on it and of you course. know life life eventually works itself out the way it's supposed to that's fantastic that's one of the things you know Ern. i had ernie and ken on my youtube channel and we talked a lot about this and and you know having that kind of 
martial arts focus mm-hmm. or, you know, when you have that as sort of the foundation of your life, then when a great opportunity presents itself, like it did to Ernie and also to Ken, cause he kept moving up as well mm-hmm. that, you know, you can just step into it and you don't lose your focus of like feeling so much pressure of I'm, you know, that movie was just a blockbuster. I think it was number five, uh, or six in the for 1990 um, yes for for box office for the year so I mean for a little tiny movie I mean that was just we were the first indie movie that kind of really made it big yes. and to be able to step in in that second movie as by then you were what 18 19 yeah, 18, 18. Yeah, yeah 18 and to have that kind of pressure and I'm sh- I would think that it's that martial arts training where it's like, I'm on, I need to be focused. I can't even think about this other stuff. That's right. Yeah, and I mean, that's, a, you know, that is the, the, I mean, for me being a martial artist and working on the, on the films and, you know, a lot of it is a lot of fun and it's, but you know what I truly do believe at the core of it, it's, it's about martial arts, right? Because that's mm-hmm. the brotherhood. It's the four brothers. That's what they that's what they do. That's who they are. That's where their focus is. And I believe that has a, a big part of, you know, the, the impact that it had because there was a value in the story that was redeeming that kids could look to families right. could look to that. They could find something of value inside of that, that, mm-hmm. that could be applied to their day-to-day living and make them kind of strive for maybe being better or, you know, that kind of thing where you're like working towards mastery right. and that, you know, it's a process and you got to work hard. And so I, I, it's cool to even see it now is, is, you know, when something like that is, you know, based on martial arts, there's mm-hmm. just an inherent value, you know, it goes beyond just like, Oh, that was a cool story. Right. Right. <laughs> And, you know. and it even has like nuance because each of the brothers represents a different personality type. You had got Leo that is the natural born leader. You've got Raphael that is that rebel. But how did they find that way to work together? How did they, you know, find that way to, to synchronize all of their energies? Um, oh, split right? It. Exactly. He their father. Exactly. OK, I, I avoided this question up until <laughs> now, but I've got to do it for the fans out here. Judith, we'll start with you. Who is your favorite turtle? Okay, in real life, mm-hmm, I'm mm-hmm. a mother. So okay. you just asked me. Yeah, which I did. Of my children, <laughs> I love the best. I, I, I mean, technically, so, you're right. I did. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I didn't have a favorite. They each were so unique, and because for me, my experience with them was multifaceted. It was, it was the turtle in the movie and the person in the suit. And then also by extension, it was the puppeteer. And those guys were just so much fun and crazy. It was like party central in the creature shop. Of course. We spent a lot of time having a lot of fun when we were not (laughs) shooting. (laughs) And so each one was Gosh, they were all so, and for me, it's really like, I just associate the turtles with the actors. Okay. And so, you know, Josh Pice was just so amazing. He's such an amazing actor. And Leif Tilden and Michelle and Sisti were hilariously funny. And Dave Foreman was like the one who came from England with, you know, with all the experience and, And they were just so unique. And if I had to like knock one off the island, I probably knocked myself off and let them stay. I mean, they were really so. That's a very that would be that's my answer. answer. I get that. I get that, Ernie. Now, obviously, you you have a lean. (laughs) You know, I'm biased. I mean, (laughs) you were Donatello. You hung out with Rav. Who's your favorite though? Oh man! I mean, I yeah. I mean, I you know, I mean. It's got to be Donatello. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's <laughs> you fair. know, I can't. I just, I mean, it just being honest. <laughs> that's that's absolutely fair. I, to all, to be, to all my Donatello fans. Hey, out there. throw the purples right up on. right now. My favorite has always been Michelangelo, and I think we have a special. Yes. Guest. Yeah. Hey. Ha. 
Cowabunga, dudes! Cowabunga! Hey, hey, Mikey! Good to see you guys! Hey, Mikey! What's up? Hey! Cool. Hey, Victor, we gonna Yo. go skateboarding after this corona thing is over? Listen, I'm ready when you're ready, man. You just awesome. tell me what we're doing. Awesome, cool. The sewer. So, uh, oh, <laughs> is there still time to sign up for the live chat? 100%. It's right cool. after this panel, so you still got time, man. I want to be part of the live chat. Uh, 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 um, uh, uh. Oh, no, uh, I got, I got uh, practice. Uh, oh, oh, man. See you guys. Ah, I'll, see practice. I'll, I'll see you guys on the rewatch party, though. Check yes. your local listings. Boom. We'll, check, we'll catch you then. Bye, guys. I got to go practice the, the Ten flips, bro. Ten flips. You got to get on that. Oh, no. It's all good. It's all good. Listen, all the fans watching, that's a quick reminder. Right after this panel, we've got the live video chats that you guys can jump on. on. So go to wizworldvirtual.com, thevault.com, all those good things. That's how you sign up. Get that right now because you need that in your whole life. And maybe maybe <laughs> Michael will be there. Like, that would be the greatest thing in the world. Um, okay, so to, to bring this back that to That was some, unexpected. <laughs> to bring this back yeah. to some very strong seriousness. Uh, Jeffrey Chim wants to know, what's your favorite pizza topping? And do pineapples go on pizza? Mm. Uh -oh. I, I have strong it? feelings about that. Okay, okay. Absolutely, they go on pizzas. I mean, if you they go on, you're craving. They go on with ham. I, I have to say that I have a theory about pizza toppings that everybody has a favorite topping in a certain way they like it. Right. But as soon as that pizza shows up, They'll eat anything that shows up. <laughs> they really will. They'll eat the toppings they don't like, or they'll just peel them off. But it's true. pretty much pizza is pizza and it's delicious. It is delicious. I love pizza. I, I tend to go more towards the veggie pizzas. Yeah, me too. Um, but uh, yeah, you got to love some pizza. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh my God. Okay. So we've got another question now. I'm not sure how to say this name. So I'm just going to read the question because there's numbers in there and I don't know what they stand for. Um, this one is for you, Ernie in TMNT okay. two. How many times did you have to film the foot audition scene where you took the bells off the mannequin? Now I was under the impression that you personally did not take the bells off, but did you ever try <laughs> to take the bells off without ringing any? Oh no, that was me. <laughs> that was all you. That was all. Oh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I got yeah. you. I got you. There you go. Hey, come on, come on. Uh, so, yeah, it was cool. You know, one of the things, just to, to give a little bit of um, backstory in terms of the filming, you know, uh, so Pat Johnson was the stunt coordinator on both the first and second one. Mm -hmm. And what was really cool about it was is that we had a lot of freedom to choreograph those fight scenes individually. So basically the process would be, we would get together and it's like, okay, it's this scene. Mm -hmm. And then uh, each of the four uh, guys would then choreograph their own little bits. And then the stunt coordinator would come by and say, hey, okay, let's see what you have for you know, this scene. And we would put together the scene and you'd give us a thumbs up and that's what it would be. Nice. So it was super cool because we were, you know, pretty much able to do all the choreography. So for uh, the first film, Donatello was able to do all that choreography. And then in the second film, do all the choreography for the character of Kino. So um, that, that, was, that was really fun because normally you don't get to do that kind of right. thing. They tell you, this is what you're doing and whatever, whatever. And that's it. You might be able to say, well, I don't really like this. And you get to maybe add one or two things. So that was, that was really awesome. And it was, uh, it said a lot about, you know, the guys that Pat had brought on to the project that he trusted them, you know, with, with the choreography like that. So that's genius. That blast. It was just a blast. I mean, there's just no two ways about it. Like when I look back at the time, it's just like, that was just too much fun. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's the best. That's the literal best. When you look back on experience like that and you go, amazing nothing but but yeah. happy times that is literally the best uh utep bb09 wants to know if either of you uh kept any props from the movie now obviously judith the the whole like antique shop that was beneath the house i hope you got something whether it was the symbols or something ridiculous 
No. Nothing? No. no. I got, I think I got like two things off of the set. One was a picture in um, April's apartment that I okay. just had fallen in love with. And I don't even, you could, you can sort of see it in the background where uh, there's a scene with me and Mikey in the apartment that it's right off to like the right of the door or something. And I have a pair of earrings that I wore okay. and that was about it. They, um, I, yeah, no, I, what I wish I had swiped was like something from the creature shop, like a head or a <laughs> arm or a foot. Or That's a, a little weird. That's a little. <laughs> I think a couple of the guys have. Really? And, and we have some fans who have, uh, we have a super fan, Michelle Ivy. And I do believe she has a turtle head. I'm not sure if it's one of ours or one that her dad made. But, wow. But yeah, I I should have taken. I wish I had the drawings from the farmhouse. Now those would those, be high value. Those. Yeah, that would be yeah, awesome. Th those would be awesome. Ernie, what about you? Did you nab anything? I, have, I do. Yeah, I do. I have one piece of latex, um, uh, a hand. Okay. And then and That's then I good. got have a. Uh, a slate actually from the second second movie. That's awesome. Um, oh, that's nice. Yeah, so that was cool. And I think like we had uh, nothing like that was in the movie, but I, I definitely know I have my crew jacket. Nice. From oh, yeah. like the oh, Letterman yeah. jacket. Yeah, so yeah. that that's, that's hung awesome. around for. Listen, I, <laughs> I've been waiting to, to bring this up for a couple minutes. Ernie, when you first sat down with that, that shirt on, I thought it was like a Ninja Turtle, but it's a basketball, oh. is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. When you got yeah. up, I was like, oh, that's not a Ninja Turtle. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I, I got so excited. I was like, yo, I want that shirt so bad. <laughs> Sent me on a mission. That's all right. Um, so we've got a couple more things in here. Judith, this one's for you. Which okay. movie did you enjoy doing mo most? Turtles? or Halloween Town, and which fans are more passionate? That's a tough one, because I love me some <laughs> I'm just saying. That is a tough one, you know, because I've got the double gift. Like, I have two different generations, mm -hmm. and I have to say, ooh, like, I would have to see them in a tug of war. Okay. Like, okay. a literal lining up. <laughs> Probably the Ninja Turtle fans, and the only reason why I say that is that Ninja Turtles is part of this gigantic franchise. That's yes. that's the movies, it's cartoons, it's comic books, it's action figures, it's all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Which Ninja Turtle um, Halloween Town is a smaller uh, pot of people, that's equally fair. as passionate. Of course, but if there really was like, if you put them on a scale, the Ninja Turtle, you know, they'd go flying. <laughs> of course, because um, there's so many more. But but Halloween Town fans are pretty damn cold of course very hey, much so. really lucky okay ernie i gotta i gotta do this one this one's for the culture here okay okay <laughs> it's a no holds bar fight you got kino versus okay. <laughs> manito from the rundown oh. who's winning talk to me I, What's... I don't know man kino's gonna have his hands full with that i guy. mean <laughs> he definitely is man i mean That's... the spinning tarzan jujitsu <laughs> <laughs> Were you a part know. of the stunt work on that one? Yes. Oh my God. That was some of the most profound physical action I have ever seen. Period. Like that's not even like, I can't even put a context to it. That stuff was amazing. I'm a huge you, you know, fan of the rundown as well. How many fans do you get on that side of the fence? Yeah. I mean, you know, so from that time period of like uh, 90 to like 91, 92 was like all of the Ninja Turtles, Surf Ninjas. That was all of that time period. Mm -hmm. And after that went away, you know, um, it was really for me, it was just I went kind of back to my martial arts mm -hmm. outside of like Hollywood and films or whatever. Like, I just went back to the martial arts. So that's when I started training in like Muay Thai kickboxing. I competed in strike force uh, a handful of times. And so my martial arts training went to, you know, another level. Yeah. Um, as far as just intensity um, and yeah, just all the, all the way around. But, you, you know, Keno's hanging out with the boys and Master Splinter and, 
you know, Master Splinter's got on a whole nother level. Well, that's so true. That's true. You never true. know. Yeah. You never know. It'll be a good match. I'll tell you that. Okay. <laughs> See, that's look. That's that's all I needed to hear because that's uh, definitely been one on my heart and mind for a few years now. I'm like, who would win that fight? I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. would be a tough one. That would definitely be a yeah. tough one. Um, so this one is a statement for, for Ernie. This is from Robert Stephen Mata. Said, uh, let me just say that you are an inspiration to many fans like myself who love doing what you do best, practicing martial arts. Uh, after watching the 90s TMNT trilogy, it has spiked my interest in practicing Shotokan karate a few <laughs> days after. Um, have you thought about touring many renowned martial arts schools in the U.S. or the world to promote your new kick punch program to students uh, in and out of the dojo? Yeah, I mean, you know, so it, it's cool that he, he brought that up and is aware of it. So being part of the martial arts like world prior to the Ninja Turtles, mm -hmm. you know, I saw directly the impact that the Ninja Turtle made in the martial arts industry as a whole, mm -hmm. meaning that there were hundreds and thousands of kids that were just pouring into every martial arts school across the country enrollments were skyrocketing without the instructor having to market or advertise or anything. Kids mm -hmm. were just martial arts, going martial arts crazy. So my dad has a, a very big uh, martial arts organization and I could see just the numbers of new members per month was just, just going through the roof. Um, so it was cool for me to see that it was beyond just the movie. Like you said, it was like actually now affecting kids. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, they're going to karate class or Taekwondo or whatever it is, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for years on end, earning their black belts, becoming junior instructors the whole, the, the whole way through. So, awesome. you know, now, you know, I'm at this point and I'm beginning to focus on other things uh, like, you know, family fitness and being able to kind of give back uh, to take my training and my knowledge and my experience and share that with people. Uh, and that all kind of started when we kind of got locked down with COVID, mm -hmm. you know, I was there with my kids and it was like, we can't go to the gym. Oh, gotta call. We lost him. We did, we come did. back. We'll give it a second. We'll give it a second. Yeah. Um, actually, while we wait for him to come back, uh, I just got to tell you, Judith, there's a lot of love for your version of April O'Neil, uh, kind of a fan favorite, which I totally understand and agree with. Um, but I have a total not turtles question for you. Okay. Okay. Armageddon. Yes. What did Chick do that was so bad that he wasn't even allowed to show up? I've been wanting to know that forever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it wasn't in the script. Okay. All right. All <laughs> so, right. But let me tell you a story about that movie because, you know, that was something that I had read for. Mm -hmm. I had found out I was in the mix for, and in the mix means you're being considered for the part, mm -hmm. but there's no guarantee you're going to get it. And that went on for well over a month. And so at a certain point as an actor, you kind of just put that away and right. you go, whatever, maybe, maybe not. Well, I get a call like one late morning saying, you got the job, you have a fitting tonight. They'll be available at around 7.30. Wow. Go do your fitting and then you'll have to shoot in the morning. There was no script available. There was no, they weren't letting you read like what you could do. So I, I got, it was like, wait, what did I do a month ago? What? And so when I got there, Will Patton and I, because mm -hmm. he was in a very similar situation where he got the job last minute. He probably had a few more days on me, but right. we just looked at each other like two deer in the headlights and kind of glommed onto each other and just went, look at me, look at me. Like, let's figure out some relationship here. And um, I'm sure he was just being, you know, a, a silly husband who didn't um, pay enough attention to his wife and child and was out oh, with his buddies drinking yep. and doing whatever. But I think that there was still a lot of love there. I can agree. I can agree. Especially when she shows up at the end. <gasps> I know. Well, you know, that wasn't supposed to be there. Really? No, no. What happened was uh, they kept writing more and more for my character because once I showed up, I kind of go all in. Like right. if I show up, it's like, I, and it's usually like first day of shooting is always insanity. And I just went for it. And I, and so I, they just kept, I was really just supposed to work for two days and I worked on and off for, I think five months. Wow. And they, they kept writing me back in and writing me back in. So that whole 
end of the movie. That was not in the original script. That's amazing. That's amazing. And a testament to you and your character development and your talent, like obviously. Um, but there's one more thing. So Devil in 37 uh, wants to know, this is again, very sincere question. What is your secret to not looking a day older than the original <laughs> movie? And I have to admit, they're absolutely right. Like, you don't look like a day has has passed at all. Are you part vampire? I mean, it's cool if you are. I know. I wish I could say. Well, okay. no. I, I think it's a couple of things. I think I have good genes. Of course. I think um, part of it, honestly, is that I have taken very, very good care of my body. I nice. have never gained a lot of weight. I have always stayed in shape. I have muscles. I have endurance. I eat very clean. I drink a lot of water. I... Um, Occasionally we'll have a little tequila because it's <laughs> that's can. clear um, as things out, I'm sure. Um, and, uh, but I think the biggest thing is you wear your life on your face. You just do. Well and said. so I've made my job in the world to have a good life, to have a good life for me to be as loving and kind to everybody who comes into my sphere I am a completely imperfect person, so I screw that up all the time. Right. But I try to, you know, regroup and then do my best. And I think that it just shows on your face. There you go. That's and I know and I know how to light myself. <laughs> <laughs> also true. Also true. <laughs> Ernie, we're glad that we got you back. We've got time for you guys to say one last thing to the fans before you uh, bounce out and get ready for the, the live chats. So um, Ernie, we'll start with you to give you a chance to say one last thing to all the fans that are watching. Well, first of all, I just want to say that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm super excited to be here. And every time I get a chance to connect with the uh, Team NT fans, is, uh, it's always such a pleasure. Um, and, uh, you know, I just want to say, you know, thank you for all of the, you know, positive vibes and support over all the years. Uh, it really means a lot. And, uh, if you ever look, uh, you know, ever want any online training or to connect with me in that way, you can find me at the kick punch club, uh, on, you know, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, and I'll, I'll be doing, uh, online classes and training and, and live events as well. So. Anyways, just want to say thank you to everybody and thank you for all the positive vibes. That's Aww. awesome. That's awesome. Judith? Um, I want to just uh, as well say thank you so much. Um, 30 years later, and it's the 30th anniversary this year, and it completely went sideways. Um, it, <laughs> it's been a, an incredible gift. And, um, you know, one of the things that I did because it was the 30th anniversary and I really did, you know, I had all kinds of comic cons. There were all kinds of events and things that got sidelined as I started getting the cast together and starting to um, do. I started a YouTube channel, which is Judith Hogue Goddess on Fire and um, and put together uh, reunions where we could get together and talk about our experience. I have one conversation, just Ernie and I, that I just love so much. Another one with Ernie and Ken Scott. Um, on another channel, I did an entire cast and crew reunion where we had two continents, five time zones, and most of the wow. people from the cast and the crew. And that was so much fun. Um, but I'm, I'm just blessed by this experience. And so, uh, you know, it's a, it's a circle. They give... I receive, I give, they receive. Of course, and of course. See the circle. Oh my goodness. And that's that's so well said. And that's the perfect way for us to wrap this up. Um, again, all the fans watching live or watching later, um, we've got paid exclusives for you to jump on to. Uh, there's autographs, uh, custom video messages that you guys can get later. The private video chats are going to happen right away. So sign up at wizworldvirtual.com. I am Victor Dangerous, the hardest working man in comics saying you thank you. You are fabulous, Victor. Thank you so, so very much. Um, I got to give love to all the fans. Definitely give love to Wizard World for bringing us all together. Yes. Guys, this has been a tremendous experience for me, and I hope you all stay safe and sane throughout the rest of this year. And hopefully we'll see you guys on the con circuit when it opens back up and the world becomes sane again. So There it is. Well, from your lips to God's ears, man. There it is. There it is. I love you, Ernie. I love you. I love you. I love you too, Judith. I'll you see you soon. You know you need to come visit. Like I know. The world Very opens soon. back up. That's come right. Very soon. Very there soon. We'll keep it and in And I want to meet you in person, Victor. Done and done. All right. Thank you, guys. This is John Glover, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Lionel Luther recommends it. Ah, have some fun. Follow your fandom.